Well, uh, as we've been saying since the 70s, wilderness is perhaps the fastest disappearing natural non-renewable resource on the planet. And the rate of disappearance accelerates as we go down the line. And um, it's a religious problem that's in the way. The uh, great old religions, which um, had some respect for the environment, but um, you know, could be interpreted in different ways, have given away to a marauding, upfront religiosity of this age, which has no respect for the environment except as a platitude. And that is um, materialism. And uh, this materialism which says we must consume, and we will consume, and that's what's best for us. And if you watch TV at night, you see uh, that. I mean, if I want to feel sexy, I buy a car with four rings on the front of it. If I want to have, be confident, I get a certain brand of toothpaste. If I want to feel better than the neighbours, then I know what sort of washing machine or fridge to buy because the television tells me how to feel better and how to look better and how to get the advantage. And it is, it is, a, uh, it is a fever that has this big mammal colony on this little planet by the throat. And how we deal with that is going to be ultimately critically important to how and what is left of the wild planet um, when finally humanity comes to term with what it's doing. And I've got to mention the story, uh, those of you who have perhaps heard me speak before will know, my friend David Suzuki coming down to Tasmania, he wanted to know if I would object if he went fishing. And I said, I sent back an email and saying, David, when you come down here, the more fish, they're feral trout, the more fish you can get out of our rivers, the happier I am. <laughs> um, but we were talking, driving across Tasmania, and he was telling me about going to his supermarket in Vancouver, and it had a new sign in the window which says, animals not allowed. So he got back in his car and went to a <laughs> shop where he could go in. Um, because that's, we forget this component, that we are part of the natural planet uh, and where uh, the one difference between us and the rest of the planet is that we have assumed uh, through with this uh, handy materialism, uh, by the way it's a religion that was, um, you go back to biblical times, it was uh, well known, was in the offing as the alternative uh, and it's just uh, not too subtly taken over. But um, there it is and uh, here we are, and you have to say, well, what is driving the current destruction of the natural commons of the planet? And that's it. And it's instituted in uh, the media, it's instituted in democracies, it's inst instituted in all political systems. And so we're going to have to, all of us, determine in the years ahead, if we're just going to say, oh, well, that's the decision. Or whether, as happened with Lake Pedder, uh, Terrania Creek, so many places back in the 70s and 80s, there has to be a new move for the Australian people not to put up with the backroom deals, the corruption, the failure of imagination, the robbery of future generations, the wreckage of, of the living ecosystems upon which so, so much of our fellow creatures in this wonderful country, both in the marine environment and uh, on land, depend. It is something that tests all of us, and we have to rise to that test. The planet depends upon it, and defiance, as, long as, as well as caring and good-heartedness, has to be part of the mix. We are a sentient, wonderful, creative mammal, finding our way. And we're challenged by destroying the very thing that inspires us, gives us adventure, and makes us uh, interested in our place in the universe, that is, the natural planet, and protecting it and passing it on into the future. Pre-catastrophe, not post-catastrophe. And this is a huge challenge to us here in Australia. 
and we have to rise to it. As far as I'm concerned, um, knowing where and how best to levy, levy the influence one has is a, uh, a big test to the intelligence. Uh, but as Thoreau pointed out way back in 1840, as he sat by Walden Pond, um, when the law is wrong, then it is our place to defy even jail, to stand up against that wrong. And there is a law which is above all others, one uh, or two, that we should be listening to. One is that we are all equal on this planet. And the second is we are the custodians now of a planet that billions more of us are going to inherit. And it is our job to see that those billions more have a smile on their face that we looked after this place for them. And if we can put a smile on their face and know that that's coming down the line, we have a smile on our own. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen.